into your hands. Lord Jesus, we, in you we live. In you we move. Into we, in you we have our very being. We are nothing without you. We lift up our voices and glorify you. Let's just take this time to praise God. Let's take this time to honor him because it is a mandate to do so. He has said in his word, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Use your breath tonight. Lift up your voice and praise him. Father, you are worthy of all Lord. You are worthy of all praise. We glorify you. We lift up our voice. You are worthy of honor. You are the beginning and the end. You are our El Shaddai. In you we live and move and have our very being. Without you are nothing ever made. We glorify you. Just welcome him right now. And as you lift up your voices, I know that the breaker goes ahead of us. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 2 that the breaker will go before you amidst a loud voice. Amidst a loud shouting, the children of Israel raised their voices, and the walls broke. The walls came down. Tonight there is a wall coming down. The breaker is going ahead of you, and the wall that has stood between you and your promise is coming down. The wall that has stood between you and your destiny is coming down. The wall that has stood between you and your health is coming down. Raise your voice tonight. Somebody praise him. After the death of Joshua, the children of Israel were wondering who will lead us into battle? Who will go ahead of us? And the Bible says God spoke to them and said Judah shall go ahead of you. Praise shall go ahead of you. As praise goes ahead of us today, as our voices are lifted up, there is an enemy that is falling. There is a Canaanite that is being crushed. There is a parasite that is being destroyed. Oh, come on, just raise your voice. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through him to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down all imaginations and anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of our Lord. Therefore, somebody raise your voice. Raise your voice tonight and praise him. The reason we live is to praise him. The reason we live is to praise him. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and praise him tonight. Lift up your voice and glorify him. He says, if we do not do so, the stones will praise him. Do not let yourself be replaced by nature. Do not let yourself be praised by people who are not human by the voices of angels. He says in the mouth of babes he has ordained praise. You are babies. You are children. You have an anointed praise upon your mouth, upon your lips. Forget your worries, forget your problems, forget your pain. Wherever you are right now, just glory high him. Just thank him. Just say, Lord, I thank you for life. I thank you for health. I thank you for something to eat at this moment. I thank you that I can still breathe. I thank you that I'm not in hospital. I thank you that I'm not infected with the coronavirus. I thank 
thank you that you have kept my home praise his exaltation praise his bragging on your God praise is saying see what the Lord has done come on somebody just show the devil what the Lord has done King Ahasuerus required that Vashti would come out so that Ahasuerus could receive praise so that people would say what a beautiful wife you have today the king of kings requires that you praise him tell the world what he has done tell the world how your beautifier has beautified Lift up his name. Hallelujah. Welcome to today's midweek service. You are highly welcome to the Miracle Center Cathedral. This is where we minister love in a hurting world. I am duly informed that the Robert Kayanja Facebook page can be accessed. The Jessica Kayanja Facebook page can be accessed. The Jessica Kayanja YouTube YouTube can also be accessed. We are working on a replacement for the Robert Kayanja YouTube. Which I know all of you have been utilizing because it's 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 it, you know it's where the biggest viewership has been. But we know that in the shortest possible time, God would have called to attention everything that has been aligned itself everything that has aligned itself negatively in, in the last few days hallelujah we are going back to the anointing on our hands the bible says that those with clean hands shall grow stronger and stronger today we are looking at adversaries of our hands. We have seen scorn, scoffers and scorn. We have seen the adversary of sleep. We have seen the adversary of being lazy. We have seen the adversary of time. Paul has said that a great door and effectual has been opened unto me. And there are many adversaries. And today we are yet to look at another adversary. And this is an adversary that we are all guilty of. Everything I preach, I preach to you, I preach to myself. And, 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 and these... Um, Summons are not specifically directed to anyone else. They are directed to the anointing on our hands. They are directed to our hands being clean. So that we will grow stronger and stronger. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember the oil is poured out by, by the, is, is, is multiplied by a poor out. And even before we pray, I advise you to pour out, to borrow vessels. Who are your neighbors? Who are your friends? Who are the people around you? Borrow vessels, not a few. Tell somebody, I need to pray with you. I need to believe God with you. I, 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 you can never be selfish with you the anointing. Because continuity the overflow will come with will definitely come with 
pouring out. Father, one more time, I present myself as a vessel willing to be used of you. I pray that if there is anything in your word that is more of me than is of you, that I will decrease at this moment even as you increase. May your word go forth as a sword powerful, strong dividing putting asunder soul and spirit bone and marrow let it be the two-edged sword that it is Father we pray that there will be interruptions in the spirit there will be a declaration of the oracles of God that even now the Holy Spirit will intercede for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And that your power will be made manifest in our hands. That we will work harder than we have ever worked. And that our hands will be set free in the name of Jesus. I welcome all of you that are watching via um, our social media outlets. I want you to know that we are blessed and honored to have you online. I can see all my online friends. All of us are here tonight. I will only mention those that I can't see. Irene, I cannot see you yet. Amen. Flavia Knight, I cannot see you yet. Gloria, I cannot see you yet. Sendagire, I cannot see you yet. But I know, I can see everybody else. Yes, yes, I have seen you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us go straight into the word. Tonight, we are going to look at an, another adversary of the hands that I myself am guilty of. An adversary that we, can all, we, we should all fight. An adversary does not, not discriminate. He even came to Jesus our Lord in the form of, of, of holy indignation. And his name is Anger. Anger is an adversary to our hands. Anger will lead to irrational behavior. Explosive outbursts. Threatening or actually uh, quitting, you know, and it, it even clouds our judgment. Threatening and quitting our jobs and clouds our judgment. No, no, Salawam Bucham. 1 Kings chapter 21. If you know someone who is prone to anger, please call them. They don't want to miss this. Someone. It's a someone of exaltation. It's a someone of encouragement. It is not what you think it is. 1 Kings chapter 21. Sometime later, there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth, the Jezreelite. Amen. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, let me have your vineyard to use for a vegetable garden since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard. Or if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it's worth. But Naboth replied, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. The Bible says in, 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 in 1 Kings 21 verse 4. So Ahab went home, sullen and angry.
Naboth, the Jezreelite, had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my ancestors. He lay on his bed sulking and refused to eat. His wife Jezreel came in and asked him, Why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, Because I said to Naboth, the Jezreelite, Sell me your vineyard. Or if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard in its place. I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel, his wife, said, Is this how you act as a king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Him, placed his seal on them and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth city with him. In those letters she wrote proclaim a day of fasting and, and give Naboth a prominent seat. Put two scone rows opposite him and get them to bring charges that he has cast both God and the king. Then take him and stone him. And the Bible shows us that that is what the elders did. And this is what happens. God is angry. With, with, with Ahab and Jezebel. And he sends Elijah. This is what the Lord says. This is verse 19. You have not murdered a man and he says, you have not murdered a man and seized his property. Then say to him, this is what the Lord says in the place where dogs licked Naboth's blood. They will lick up your blood. Yes, yours. Hallelujah. Amen. Ahab Ahab is a king of Israel. And Ahab sees a neighboring field that he admires. And he goes to the owner of the field called Naboth. And he says to the owner of the field, I want this piece of land. I want this vineyard. If you can sell me this vineyard, all I need is for you to name the price. I will give you the vineyard. I will give you the price and take the vineyard. But the owner of the vineyard says no. This is ancestral land. I cannot just sell you ancestral land. It is not wise to sell ancestral land. Only a fool does that. I don't want to sell this land because it is ancestral land. And Ahab is offended. The Bible says he becomes angry. He becomes sullen. He walks home. He's mad. Just because the owner of the vineyard has said no. An entire king living in a palace owning vast, vast land owning vast fields but he's mad. He's angry because one person cannot offer him a vineyard. But this is what is interesting. He's angry at the first no. The first no angers him. The first no frustrates him. In business, the first no is not really the last no. There is 
is a time to bargain. There is a time to negotiate. Can somebody put my microphone right, please? There is a time to bargain. There is a time to negotiate. There is a time to come back and say, please, maybe I can offer you more money. Let's agree. Make an, maybe I can offer you half of the kingdom. Don't you know that I'm a king? Maybe there is something we can do about this. Don't you know that I'm a king? But the first no causes Naboth to walk out. Uh, causes Ahab to walk out. He's angry. He's mad. He's confused. If you're going to be a good worker, if you're going to do a, a, be a good businessman, if you're going to do a, be a, business, a good business professional, if you are going to be a good marketeer, you need to master the power of yes and no. You need to be able to master the power of yes and no. You cannot be offended when somebody says no. You need to know that when you approach somebody and you are trying to sell them something, they will either say yes or they will say no. Do not become mad when they say no. Simply take time. Explain it to them. Show them that they need it. Show them how beautiful it is. But the king walks out at the first no. He's frustrated. He's angry. He's sullen. He's mad. People have a right to say no or yes. If they are clients, they own the money. You don't have to force them to buy. If they are the ones selling, they own the product. You don't have to force them to sell. They have a right to say yes or no. If you fail to master the power of yes or no, you will never be good at your hands. Your boss at work can say this is a good job. Your boss at work has the right to say it is a bad job. Because if they are paying for you, they are paying for good services. They are paying for a job well done. They are paying for a job that is splendid. But Ahab could not master the power of no. When he had the word no, the negotiation failed. He stormed out. He walked out. He was angry. He was mad. How many negotiations? How many deals do we walk out of? How many bargains do we walk away from? How many jobs have you walked away from? How many relationships have you walked away from? Because you had the word no. Because you had something that did not make you happy. Because you had something that did not encourage you. Because you had something that did not uplift your spirit. Because you had something that didn't encourage you. How many situations have you run away from? Because you had something that upset your ego. King Ahab simply had the word no. He could have said I'm the king. I will give this man so much money that he will not be able to say no anymore. But he walked away and he was mad because he had one walk. In one no in his, in, in his vocabulary he had not mastered the power to, ha, to hear the word no even if it's a woman you are going to marry even if it's a woman you admire the moment you approach her there is a chance that she might say yes there is a chance that she might say no and if you are afraid of the word no you will run away from many opportunities. You will run away from many jobs. If you have a sensitive ego, you will lose people 
that are needful. You will lose people that will stand with you. This is something that we are all guilty of. He had one word. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 29 29 says whoever is patient has great understanding but one who is quick tempered displays foolishness. Whoever is patient has great understanding. When anger comes your way you lose understanding. You lose the ability to see how valuable a job is. How valuable a relationship is. How valuable people are. I have talked about emotional intelligence again and again. Emotional intelligence is to accept pain in order to gain. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 11 says it is the glory of a man to overlook an offense. You can see an offense and decide to ignore it. You can see an offense and decide to walk away from it. You can see an offense and be strong and say I will not affect let that affect my kingdom I'm already the king I have already achieved so much I will not let that put me down I will look beyond it I cannot meditate on that it is the glory of a man to overlook an, an offense emotionally intelligent people overlook offenses they see the offense and they ignore it so that they can gain. He walks away from Naboth and yet Naboth had something he liked in his hands. Oh, come on somebody, listen to that. Some people are annoying but they are holding something you need. Some people are annoying but they have the job you need. Some people are annoying but they have the promotion you need. Some people are annoying but they have the money you need. Some people are annoying but they have the exposure you need. It is the glory of an individual to overlook an offense. Ignore their anger. Ignore the, 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 ignore the anger and gain what they have in their hands. Ignore the provoking so that you can hold the beauty in them. Some people are maddening but they have what you need. He walked away from Naboth and yet Naboth had what he needed. He walked away from Naboth and yet Naboth had what he needed. How many times have we walked away from people who have what we need? Right from our marriages. Right from our workplaces. Right from our bosses. Right from our friends. They are annoying. But you need them. He walked away from Naboth. Some people storm out of meetings. And yet when you storm out, you are the loser. Some people storm out of relationships and when you storm out of it you are bound to lose more. It is the glory of the man to overlook an offense. Meaning the offense will be there. But Proverbs 19 verse 11 says overlook it. Think of what you are going to get. Think of the beauty you're going to get. Think of the gain you're going to get. Emotionally intelligent people are successful people. 
They are very powerful people. You will never know that their heart. Because they will overlook it. And they will consider what they will get from the person that is hurting them. It doesn't mean they don't have spirits. It doesn't mean they don't see through the situations. I remember I once dealt with someone who was very gifted in a certain field but very annoying and at that time everyone would say to me this person is annoying they are annoying they are very annoying to the point that even when they left the church and went somewhere else they were still annoying but I was benefiting something from their ability and to overlook the offense was very easy. But after some time, they moved on to someone who had been seeing them with me and they thought that because I was handling them, they must be very easy people. And when they began to deal with that person, because you need emotional intelligence all the time, probably they did not need the gifting the person had but they called me and they said how could you cop how could you not see and I said what I saw was more than just all those things you have the ability to benefit from the owner of the vineyard you have the ability to benefit from he who has what he wants if only you can ignore the offense and when that person moved on everyone around me came back and they told me we used to look at you we were so burdened this is what they used to do to us this is what they used to do to us and I realized that they didn't benefit as long as that, that person was there I was the one benefiting because I was overlooking the offense but that doesn't mean that I was not of, I, I, I was not offended it is the glory of a man to overlook an offense you do not have to make a point you don't have to impress anyone by showing how angry you can get anger is not a yardstick for emotional abilities. Anger is a yardstick for performance. It will hamper your performance. Sorry? It will it will stop your performance. Her anger will cloud your judgment. Nabo forgets he's the king. Ahab forgets he's the king and goes into his room angry mad the bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 11 a fool always loses his temper but a wise man holds it back which means we have all been fools at one point or another he walked away from what he needed and yet he was a king he could have negotiated he could have bargained he would have called the whole clan and said to them this is the money I'm availing 
all of you. Go, 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 go. And each of you buy yourself a hundred vineyards. But he was offended. And offense clouded his judgment. And he walked away from what he wanted. Never allow the devil to cause you to walk away from the works of your hand from your job from your business deals from your contracts never feel the need to impress anyone so that you can walk out even of a relationship of value because of anger Ahab forgot that he was walking away from someone who had something they needed Naboth had the vineyard but he walked away and he was mad at him and guess what even when he leaves Naboth he goes home and he's still angry that is what they call spilled over anger it stops affecting your business and it begins to affect your marriage and then it goes into your marital bed and then it affects your children and then it affects the people around you and then it affects your friends he had been angry in the fields but he was still angry in the city he had been angry in the country but he was still angry at home the anger spilled over that is what anger does aggravated anger will spill over and become resentment and the problem with Ahab his anger was not expressed there are people who become angry like that they don't express their anger they suppress it so you think they are not angry but you see somebody who is sulking the Bible says Ahab was sullen he was mad in his spirit but he was not shouting and suppressed anger is very complicated suppressed anger can lead to diseases if it is not expressed on the outside by throwing tantrums it will be expressed on the inside by high blood pressure by, by, by all those other diseases Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22 says a merry heart is medicine to the bones how many people are sick and they don't even know what they are suffering from but they are walking around with suppressed anger you are carrying the anger from your first marriage you are carrying the anger from your last job you are carrying the anger from the last relationship and get a merry heart is medicine to the bones they are people who are healthy just because they are happy they are satisfied with life they are not angry with everyone they are going around saying it is well with me they are like Solomon they are saying I have peace on everybody they are saying I have no enemy a merry heart is medicine to the bones that is Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22 a merry heart is medicine to the bones but a crushed spirit dries up the bones a crushed spirit dries up the bones Ahab suppressed his anger he went home with it he refused to forget and, and even his wife could see 
that he was angry. Do not let your anger spill over. Do not let your hatred spill over. The Bible says that people will be given to anger. But the the Lord who gives you a duration of time when you are not allowed to go over into anger a, a merry heart is medicine to the bone Ahab gets home and, and, and Jezebel and I don't even need to go into details about Jezebel. You know who Jezebel is and you know what is expected of her. But his wife Jezebel looks at him. People like Jezebel are anger catalysts. They they, 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 they they make sure you are angrier than you should be. And they build strife, they build contention. They thrive on fights. And even if you have suppressed anger that you are going to heal from. And you meet a Jezebel. They will remind you of the person who made you angry in primary six. They will remind you of the person who made you angry in nursery school. They will say, why are you looking like that? You cannot take this lying down. Do you remember what they did to you? You need to be angry. You need to face it. You need to deal with it. Oh, we rebuke the Jezebel spirit. It is a spirit of manipulation. It is a spirit that forces you to concentrate on what is evil instead of what is godly. On to what is bad instead of what is good. It is the spirit of the serpent that comes to Eve and tells you do not celebrate what God has given. Be angry with what he has not given. You. She would have said to her husband, You are the king. You have everything you need. Let's negotiate with that man. If he says no, let's forget that field. Let's plant a better one. But Jezebel will catalyze. Jezebel will remind you. Jezebel will insult. Jezebel will force you to concentrate on what you don't have instead of what you have. So Jezebel asks Ahab what did they do to you? Jezebel asks Ahab why are you angry? And Jezebel's anger is different from Ahab's anger. Jezebel's anger is an explosive type of anger. It is not a suppressed type of anger. Jezebel's anger cannot keep a job. Jezebel's anger cannot keep a contract. Jezebel's anger cannot keep a deal. Ahab's anger can because it is a suppressed type because it is a type that you can pretend you don't have but Jezebel's anger is explosive when she is angry she likes to show it when she's angry she likes to make a point when she's angry she wants to do something about it when she's angry. She wants to do something about it. So she speaks to Ahab. She speaks to Ahab. And Ahab says to her, they took the field that I wanted. They refused to sell it to me. And she says to him, that's okay. Leave that to me. Because in her eyes, it's about being forceful. 
the anger of Jezebel does not negotiate. The anger of, of Jezebel does not bargain. The anger of Jezebel does not use yeses and noes. The anger of Jezebel simply stresses a point. It is a dictatorship type of situation. And Jezebel says I will handle it. And now cutting I have the king because of anger has brought in someone else. And there is regrouping. And that is terrible for any business. And that is terrible for every any work. When contention begins to move, contention will cause people to regroup. There there will be people who are for and there will be people who are against. And that is the technical definition of division. And it is only when you are together. It is only when you are united. It is only when you are united that you are able to achieve from God. The Bible says about the early church that they were in one accord and they lacked nothing. They were in one accord and they lacked nothing. The moment there is no unity it doesn't matter how much you pray. It doesn't matter how much you fast. It doesn't matter how excellent you are. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter how great the ability. The moment that there is disunity, the works of our hands are affected. Our jobs will be affected. Our ability to negotiate will be affected. There is regrouping in Ahab's house, in Ahab's workplace, and it is him and his wife now, versus Naboth. And now they are making their deal a war ground. What would have been bargaining? What would have been negotiated? What would have been understanding? what would have been consensus is now a battleground. Let me see who will have it. It was so simple. They were the kings. It was so simple. They were the leaders. They could simply have gone back. How can you be offended after the first trial? How can you be offended after the first no? How can you be offended after the first negotiation? People are allowed to say good deal or no deal. But they were offended. And now it turns into a battleground. It is the glory of the man to ignore an offense. You need to look forward to going to work. You need to be excited about your workplace. You need to celebrate where you live. Do not turn it into a battleground. Do not turn it into a battleground. Do not turn it into a battleground. They turned it into a battleground. They began to fight. And yet they needed the man they were fighting. How many times do we regroup? How many times do we regroup? against our bosses against our supervisors against those who lead us we need them as much as we hate them how many times do we turn our workplaces into a battleground our business is a place of war Proverbs chapter 22 verse 24 says do not 
associate with a man given to anger. Or with a short-tempered man. Ahab associated with another ill-tempered person. And it became explosive. Actually, if you are a short-tempered person, have people around you that are calm. The moment you are both short-tempered, you should realize that you were mismatched. Have people around you that are calm. Have people around you that are understanding. Have people around you that can reason. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. The wise man says do not be quickly provoked in your spirit. Ahab was quickly provoked. And the work of his hands was damaged. The work of his hands was spoiled. And now it turns into a battleground. And what would have been negotiation now becomes competition. The competition is so severe. Unhealthy competition is birthed by anger. Cain was angry with his brother because his brother received favor from God. An unhealthy competition caused him to kill his brother. Unhealthy competition now is let us see who is richer let us see who is more powerful let us see who owns the vineyard that is what they got into healthy competition is competition against yourself I need to get better than I was yesterday my friends are doing well I need to do well as well I can't move at the pace I moved last year. That is healthy competition. But unhealthy competition is when the workplace has become a battlefield. When you are fighting, when you are quarreling, most of the time it is better to pull out. Because you will never gain anything that will stand from such a work area and at the end Jezebel goes and kills Naboth she kills the negotiation she kills the deal she kills the contract she kills what would have been their project and their work negotiation bargaining all that is work convincing and marketing all that is work but because of their anger because of their contention because of their competition they will kill the place of work. There are many organizations that have, were beautiful organizations. But because of contention, because of strife, they have come down. Many marriages, many relationships that were beautiful. But when anger came in, an unresolved anger that became resentment they, quar they carried it on from year to year from generation to generation they came down the Bible says they were in one accord and they lacked nothing I am certain that if Ahab and Jezebel and Naboth had come together and sat down and said this is what 
what we want. Naboth, Naboth, we will pay you a lot more than you have ever dreamed about. Not only we will pay you, we will pay your clan. Just give us a limit. Just tell us the time. Just tell us, give us the time frame. Just tell us the people. I am sure they would have gotten somewhere. But anger causes what would be work to become a battlefield. And many people worry about waking up and going to a place of contention and going to a place of strife. Whether it is a ministry, whether it is a company, whether it is a partnership, if there is strife, if there is anger, if there is hatred, it becomes very difficult to dwell in that place. Ahab was impatient. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 13 says, Better a patient person than a warrior. Oh, better one with self-control than one who takes a city. It is better to be able to control your hunger anger, than to take a city, to conquer a city. Because he who controls their anger does not just take a city. They conquer a nation. They conquer the world. Everybody loves an emotionally intelligent person. Everybody loves a happy person. Everybody loves a team player. Everybody loves a joyful person. Better is one who can control their anger than one who can take a city. Because once you can take a city, once you can take a city because you have control you cannot take just a city you will take everything else you will take the whole world from the city you will take the nation from the nation you will take the country from the country you will take the world if you have any wealth the best wealth to have is the wealth that controls anger. Is the wealth that controls your temper. Is the wealth that can govern your feelings. If there is any riches that are worth it, it is the riches of being emotionally intelligent. The wealth of overlooking an offense the wealth of saying let me ignore it until I can have a vineyard let me ignore it until I can have what they have in their hands Moses lost that promised land just because of anger he refused to control his emotions when God spoke to him and told him to speak to the rock out of anger he went and hit the rock. He was angry with the children of Israel. They were annoying. But they were his clients. Without them, Moses did not have a job. They are people who are annoying. But you need them. The moment he struck, the moment he misbehaved in front of his clients, he lost them. And he was replaced by a young man called Joshua who was not even a Levite. It is better to control your anger than to take a city because one who controls anger does not just take a city. One who controls anger takes the world. One who controls anger takes the globe. One who controls anger takes 
lose everything if there is something you should control it is your anger if there is something you should be in control of it is your anger and at the last moment Moses has been anointed Moses has been a hard worker Moses has been skilled Moses has been moving in his time Moses has been moving in his in his season Moses has been moving in in the right anointing Moses was never lazy Moses was not a slumberer he only got angry he only got angry tonight we rebuke the spirit of anger we command the spirit of anger to leave our hands in the mighty name of Jesus we pray for the anointing to govern our anger we pray for the anointing to govern our heart we pray for the anointing to govern our emotions the power of God to control how we feel the power of God to control what is happening to us the power of God to control our spirits we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus we come against any ancestral spirits that has caused anger to be a part of us Moses had grandparents who his great grandfather Jacob Moses had an ancestral and they were angry people and along the lineage they grew angrier he was in the lineage of Levi and I know that we hear Jacob when he is blessing his sons cursing Levi and calling him an angry boy and calling him one who has committed offenses because of anger. But Levi is the grandson, is, is a grandparent to Moses. Both Moses' parents were Levites. And Moses' anger manifested. Not because he was a bad man. But because he had it in his in lineage. Every spirit. That is causing you. To manifest anger. To manifest resentment. To manifest hatred. To be filled with contention. To be filled with strife. There are some people you would rather make friends with. Being their enemies is too costly. It, it, it's costing you energy. It costing you money. You have fought them. You are not getting out of the way. You are not getting them out of the way. They are not getting. They are getting better every day. You have hired people to abuse them on Facebook. To write about them in the papers. You say all kinds of things to intimidate them. And was your, while your anger goes up, they prosper. It is not healthy to be angry with people like that. They are Naboths. They are carrying a vineyard. You would rather partner with them. You would rather be associated with them. You would rather work with them. You would rather be seen with them. They have a vineyard. They have a vineyard. They have something you need. It is the glory of a man to overlook an offense. It is the glory of a man to overlook an offense. May God help all of us. Lord have mercy on all of us. I believe that as we end today's sermon it should be 
repentance on all regarding all of us not just towards one individual but we all need to get to a point where we are governing our anger. If Moses had governed his anger, he would have walked into the promised land. There are many people that have worked so hard. You've worked hard at a relationship. You've worked hard at a marriage. You've worked hard at a business. You've worked hard at a ministry. And at the last minute, you were striking the rock instead of talking to him you have lost your cool and people have gone in to celebrate and you have walked away in anger and you are looking back and you are saying I wish I never left but you did today we, we ask God to forgive us Lord, have mercy on us for the times that we have walked away, for the times that we have failed to master the power of yes and no, for the times that we have forsaken our vineyards and gone and planted other peoples. Solomon talks about the Africans and he says that is the who we are. We have abandoned our own brother's vineyards. We have abandoned our own mother's vineyards. We have abandoned the homeland's vineyards. And we have gone to others' vineyards because of anger, because of contention, because of strife, because of hatred. Lord, have mercy on us. Deliver our hands from working in anger. Deliver our hands from working in strife. Deliver our hands from working in a battleground. Deliver our hands from ministering in contention. Deliver us, O oh Lord. May we be free. May our hands grow stronger and stronger. In the name of Jesus. Father, you have promised in your word that though our sins be as red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow though they be as red as crimson they shall be as white as wool have mercy upon us king of kings have mercy upon us non-changing God have mercy upon us El Shaddai have mercy upon us heavenly father have mercy upon us lord of lords give us a new beginning take away the anger let us never run away from our vineyards let us never run away from negotiations. Let us run out, never run away from bargains. Never run, let, let us run away from proving that we are right. Lord Jesus, give us a new beginning. May we become stronger and stronger. 